on the 15th of November 2001, Microsoft released this beast, the original Xbox. And although this huge box didn't perform so well in Japan, it certainly paved the way for an impressive new entrant to the video game arena. It was a huge console, about the size of a VCR, with an equally huge controller called the Duke, which I've heard is making a return on the Xbox One. This controller has been panned as huge and clunky, but I've never had a problem with it, particularly for driving games and first person shooters. And I don't have huge hands either, but I get why some persons, particularly females, would have issues with it. Now this list, as with all other lists and reviews, is based on personal opinion, not popular opinion. This list might be in alphabetical order, but certainly not in order of preference. Let's do this. Released April 25, 2005, Era 51 follows a viral outbreak in a secret US military facility. In this first person shooter, you fight your way through five levels inside Era 51 as you uncover the truth about the virus and an ancient alien race living beneath Era 51. This game had tight controls, an interesting story coupled with some interesting weapons and great visuals for its time. I want every square inch of this base searched. We've got an unauthorized agent running around loose here. He's compromised the elevator and blew up that transport truck. April 28th, 2006, Criterion and EA Games released this monster. I was completely blown away by Black. The gameplay, the graphics, the audio, I was impressed. I played this game on the hardest difficulty available and let's just say I got my money's worth. It took me a while to complete it. I was stuck on the last level for a really long time. One of those games where I had to take a lengthy break from it before finally completing it. I know what you're trying to do, sir. It ain't gonna work. Released September 7, 2004, another gem from Criterion. Burnout 3 Takedown was the title that got me interested in the Burnout series. Fast cars, loud crashes, that's the world of Burnout, where you're rewarded handsomely for wreaking havoc and causing as much damage as possible. This high speed arcade style extreme racer came at a good time in my gaming history, where I was pretty much neck deep into racing games. <laughs> November 16th, 2004, Spark Unlimited and Activision released Call of Duty Finest Hour. This, as far as I know, is the first console version of Call of Duty. I think the first Call of Duty was released on the PC in 2003 and was just called Call of Duty. By this time, I played through enough Medal of Honor games to play through COD, which was created by disgruntled Medal of Honor devs. So it was and still is very similar to Medal of Honor. Although many bashed the modern Medal of Honor games, calling them Call of Duty clones, they were, kinda, but not really. As I stated, Medal of Honor was around before Call of Duty. Either way, I had a good time with Finest Hour. And it's what got me started with Call of Duty. Kinda lost interest in Call of Duty since Black Ops 3, but that's a story for a different campfire. My name is Alexander Sokolov. I thought I was safe. As a watchmaker's apprentice, I would learn the business, then open a shop of my own. Maybe get married, have children, start a life. But now, our cities are under attack. Released October 21st, 2003, Crimson Sky's High Road to Revenge was one of those games I got late in the console cycle. I think by the time I got around to this game, I was already playing 360 games. So while it struck me as a really good game, I didn't invest much time in it, but the little I did was time well spent and makes this game deserve its place on this list. Set in an alternate 1930s, this game gave you great controls, a cool story, amazing visuals and an overall unforgettable gaming experience, regardless of how much time you invested in it. Oh, humanity! Nice work, Nathan! That was easy enough. Guess the Cajuns just ran out of gas. November 14th, 2001, DOA 3 was a launch title for the Xbox, and after playing DOA 2 on the Dreamcast and loving it, DOA 3 being the first title I won on the Xbox made perfect sense. This game basically took everything I knew and loved about DOA 2 and made it better. Although DOA presents itself as a button smashing festival, 
if you try real hard and pay enough attention, you'll quickly realize that there's room for expert strategy. And all those cheap counters can be used to your advantage with enough practice. A button smasher and a tactician can be easily differentiated. Winner! Released September 27th, 2005 by Ubisoft. Far Cry Instinct was the title that got me interested in this franchise. Didn't play the original Far Cry and I couldn't get into Far Cry 2, but I played Far Cry Instincts through to the end and decided later that if Instincts was so good, although 2 struck me as some really unplayable shit, 3 might just be worth a shot. And it was. Been loving Far Cry since. After some annoying journalist drags you to some remote tropical island, shit quickly hits the fan and your world falls apart, then rebuilds itself after you become some kind of superhuman predator. Good game. Check it out if you haven't and are up for some old school. Rise and shine, Mr. Freeman. On November 15, 2005, Valve and EA released Half-Life 2. Now before this release, I heard and read a lot about Half-Life. Similar to the original Far Cry, always hearing what a good game it is, but never played the original. So I started with part 2. It did indeed live up to the hype. Hype being a thing I don't subscribe to really. T to be honest, I have no idea why people thought No Man's Sky and Mighty No. 9 was going to be any good. I'm never fooled by the hype. But I tried Half-Life 2 and will agree, it deserved all the praise it received. Job well done. You'd better run. There's nothing else you can do here. It was November 15th, 2001 when the gaming world was treated to this amazing first-person shooter. Bungie and Microsoft Game Studios released Halo Combat Evolved, the first in the Halo series. Back then, when I played this for the first time, even before completing the campaign, I was convinced that this was the best game I ever played. And for good reason. I remember experiencing true immersion like never before. I was blown away by just about everything. I'm talking down to the grass. So visuals, story controls and overall gameplay made the original Halo a must own, must play title for the original Xbox. I've lost interest completely in Halo and have not played a Halo game since Halo 4, which I drudged through for review purposes. But another story for another time. Maybe I'll make a list of all the games I outgrew, for lack of a better word. <laughs> Bioware and Microsoft Game Studios on April 12, 2005 presented one amazing role-playing game called Jade Empire. Now, I got it late and decided to play it even later. I think this was another game that almost felt the sting of the generation changeover, but I did play it, and all the way through. Jade Empire was, from what I remember, one of those RPGs that weren't that hard and relatively short, but that's kinda how I like games. I've always had either a large collection of games or an exponentially growing collection, so sometimes, most times actually, I don't have all of forever to be playing any one title. I was able to breeze through Jade Empire while having one hell of a time doing so. Master, Nijo came to warn me. He saw a boat from the Outlook past the fields. Strange outlaws, they, 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 they fired something at him. Now I like my games pretty much as I do my movies. Mature rated, extreme violence and language. And after Rockstar North, Released Manhunt on April 20th, 2004, I got just that, a dark and twisted murder simulator called Manhunt. A game where you're a convict thought executed, given a second chance by entering a fucked up game where you try to survive the night while brutally dispatching suspecting and unsuspecting thug after thug. You know, there's a hypocrisy I've noticed in gaming that I think I'm gonna make a video for as well. Can anyone watching this video even explain to me in the comments section why was a game like Hatred given so much shit for its content, but games like Manhunt, Postal, and even that bullshit Friday the 13th game given a thumbs up by the community? I mean, it's basically the same thing, a, a lunatic killing people indiscriminately, mostly for shits and giggles. Anyway, I'll get back on topic. Manhunt was a decent game with good controls, a serviceable camera, and numerous entertaining ways to take the enemy out. <laughs> When I look back at these lists, they serve as a reminder of how many great franchises Rockstar started up. I guess making those GTA and Red Dead games take a whole lot more time than, say, Oni 
and Smuggler's Run. Guess that would explain why we don't see such a large variety from Rockstar anymore. But back in 2001, December the 12th to be exact, Rockstar just seemed to be rolling out the hits. Max Payne grabbed me with its slow motion bullet time gimmick. To take out the enemy using this style of gunplay was nothing short of impressive. The dark, gritty, noir style story wasn't bad either. He and Mickey are having too many yet. November 6, 2001, Oddworld Inhabitants and Microsoft Game Studios released Oddworld Munch's Odyssey. This was also one of my earlier Xbox titles. Even at this point, I wasn't so much into platformers. But this being a new game for a new console, that novelty led me to pick it up, play it and complete it. With insane weapons, chanting abilities along with some great visuals and controls, this ridiculous story had me from start to finish. Now, I can't find anybody. During the Xbox and PS2 era, I was seriously into my racing games. And when racing games started looking this good, I mean, I had little to zero interest in Gran Turismo because of how shitty it looked. Yeah, call me shallow, but I was not able to get past the visuals of then GT games, even for the time they looked bad to me. But shortly after its release on November 14th, 2001, Project Gotham had me hooked. I loved everything about this game. The graphics, the controls, the car selection. This smooth arcade style racer where you race for kudos was a shit back then. Gratuitous Games and Activision released Soldier of Fortune 2 Double Helix on June 18, 2003. Now much like Manhunt, the pull factor Soldier of Fortune had was the mature content, the high core element. I appreciated this in the original Soldier of Fortune I played on the Dreamcast and loved it here. After playing through a Soldier of Fortune game, I can't deny the simple fact that this franchise really isn't that good, and that the decapitation and huge amounts of blood is simply a gimmick used to cover up this mediocrity. But it matters not. The truth is, and it might seem odd me saying this, but video games aren't and never will be that serious. If it's fun, then a video game has achieved success. Because as much as not all video games are for kids, they all should be just that, fun. Now that's what I got from the Soldier Fortune series. Some good mindless fun. Now I'm no Star Wars fan, not even a little bit. I've tried to watch the movies simply because I love sci-fi and everyone and their moms were talking about them, but mindless conformity and lockstepping were never my strong suits. They bored me to tears. I did however try Star Wars Obi-Wan released December 19, 2001 by LucasArts, and I enjoyed this lightsaber wielding adventure all the way to the end. If memory serves me correctly, this game wasn't so popular with the fans, but like I give a shit. I've tried Star Wars before did nothing for me, but Star Wars Obi-Wan was in my humble or not so humble opinion a really good experience. Are you sure my presence here is necessary? This is another one I expect shit for. On March 18th, 2003, Studio Gigante and Microsoft Game Studios released Dao Feng, Fist of the Lotus. Quick history lesson, that character called Noob Saibot was co-creators of Mortal Kombat John Tobias and Ed Boon's last names in reverse. Now John Tobias split with Ed Boon a long time ago and created Tao Feng. Based on my recollection, Tao Feng was one of those games that slipped completely under the radar. I don't remember hearing one good thing about this game other than the ads for it. I love this game though. I love the visuals, the rapid fighting styles, and the limb damage mechanic. Not sure why this game didn't make it, I'd be more than happy to give a Tao Feng 2 a shot, but whatever. Jade Dragon is the winner. On January 1, 2004, Starbreeze and Vivenda Universal Games released the Chronicles of Riddick Escape from Butcher Bay. At the time, this game blew me away. The stealth, the first-person hand-to-hand combat, the visuals, and the voice acting plus overall great gameplay had put this game at the top of my list. Due to lack of evolution on the developer's part, however, Dark Athena wasn't that good. 
for the escape from Butcher Bay to this day shares a top spot for one of my best original Xbox games of all time. Darkness. I can hide the bodies here. Another from Vivendi Universal Games. This time they teamed up with Computer Artworks to release on September the 10th, 2002, The Thing. This game I believe followed up where the movie left off. It was a very good game which mixed action adventure with survival horror. Your decisions would determine how your team members responded to you. Should you fuck up too much, your team members would go as far as rogue and attack you. You had to keep a watchful eye on said team members to ensure they weren't infected as well. There were many elements to this game that made it one of my greats. But the fact that on my first playthrough, at the final stage, I got a corrupted save file and had to replay the entire game proves to me how good this game was. I don't do that replay nonsense. I hate doing things over, I hate backtracking. Fuck Ghosts and Goblins. So for me to replay a game because of a shitty hardware malfunction, that game has to be good. Released by Bunkasha Publishing and Activision on February 4th, 2002, Reckless The Yakuza Missions was another of my earlier titles for the Xbox. This game feels like a mix of full auto and smugglers run. It was an addictive action cops and robbers style game where you could play as either the cops or spies hired to take on the Yakuza and engage in some serious car chases through the streets of Hong Kong. It was one of those games that if it were just laying there in a pile of other games, would seem hard to pick up as just looking at it, there would be very little incentive, but give it a shot. At the time at least, it will be hard to put down, assuming you like that vehicular combat cops and robbers style of gameplay. Great job. A few titles that didn't make the list, but worthy of commendation just the same. Soul Calibur 2. The House of the Dead 3. Ah, get away! The Lord of the Rings, Two Towers. Time Splitters 2. Nikolai, the light! Stupid torch does nothing in this army work. some of your all-time greats. Tell me about them in the comments section below. And if you liked what you saw here, feel free to hit that like, share and subscribe button. If for some reason I pissed you off, we all know where to find those dislike and unsubscribe buttons, don't we? Until next time though, thanks for playing and thanks for watching.